Welcome once again to the lockdown farm. We are here in Spain on the quarantine during the coronavirus outbreak. And what we're going to be doing today is looking at the best exercises for your low back during this period of time. Now, one of the big things is that you may f or you may not be moving around as much. You're not going to work. Your general daily activity has been restricted. And that means you're probably sitting more. And one thing that we do know is that not moving is not good for your body. It makes you a bit more predisposed to pain. You might be getting some niggles, especially in the low back. So what we are going to take you through is a set of exercises that are really going to help reduce the chances that you have any pain or discomfort in the low back area. So one of the most important aspects we're going to be looking at is maintaining all of the ranges of motion that we have available in our low back. These really are flexion, an extension, rotation, side bending, and also one more that you may not be so familiar with, but this is called traction. And traction can be a really nice way just to relieve any symptoms that you may have in the low back. So we're gonna take you through an exercise for each of those directions. Jacqueline's gonna be leading the way, and we're gonna hopefully get your back moving and you guys feeling better during this period. So the first exercise we're gonna do, you guys may have heard of before, it's called a Jefferson curl. And what we're working on here is the flexion. You can see that Jacqueline's just picked up a rock. This can be a book. It doesn't even have to be any object. You can just do the movement completely free. So what happens is Jacqueline's gonna start at her neck. She's then gently gonna flex each vertebral segment the legs, what's important is the legs stay straight and she just goes down as far as she feels comfortable. She's going to hold it there for a few seconds and what you see is the low back's flexed. Now when she comes back up, she keeps the legs straight and just reverses the process. If you want to imagine, imagine we have our vertebra here and all we're doing is trying to open out each vertebra into flexion. This is really going to help with the range of motion through the, through the low back. So this is our exercise number one, it's called our Jefferson Curl. You've got company. Yeah. And this next exercise focuses on extension of the low back. And it's a very common yoga pose, often called downward dog. Luckily we had Tom here, which was a nice coincidence. <laughs> but this one we're going to do on the floor. Obviously you can put a mat down if you want to feel a bit more comfortable. But the focus here is Jackson's going to come down. She comes through a push-up position, and as you can see now, the back goes very much into extension. And this is our focus. She then can come back out, and then comes back down, and relaxes. You can start to spend a little bit of time in this position, maybe about 20 to 30 seconds, and working through six to eight reps. By doing this on the floor, it's a nice way to really focus the low, uh, the extension onto the low back. When we're standing, it can sometimes be a bit harder to control. Okay, exercise number two, downward dog or a low back extension. So for our third movement, what we're now gonna focus on is rotation. You can see here, Jacqueline's got the stone again that she had through the Jefferson curl. But we've also got the wall, and the wall's going to act as a target. What's nice about this is it means we know if we're rotating more one way or more the other way, and that might show us some limitations that we have. So Jack is going to stand in front of the wall. She takes the rock, reaches round to touch, reaches round to touch, reaches round to touch, reaches round to touch. So it's a very simple drill. But if you notice day to day, we might not actually focus on our rotation that much. We bend down to pick things up. You know, we're working in different ranges of motion. So just having a little focus of this, where we really rotate, really stretch round, we get the hips working as well. And with this exercise, you can work a lot more repetitions than the first two. You may even build up to 30 to 50 reps um, on both sides. And that's just gonna help to free up the back as we go through. As we come into exercise number four, we start to look at our side bending. And we're gonna, we'll, 
uh, combine this movement with a lunge now. The reason we combine it with a lunge, it just allows us to focus a little bit more on each side. And we're going to do two hand positions for this. So the first part is Jacqueline lunges forward in a very normal way. And then she's going to focus on tilting her hip out to the side. She's then going to come back onto the other side. And again, she pushes towards the leg that is forward. She's going to come back. She's going to push towards the leg that is forward and then come back. And just once more. Now, with this exercise, what can actually be st uh, quite easy to do is people lunge, I just lunge forward, and they actually rotate as they side bend. But we're going to try and isolate the side bending here. So it's important that you're almost following a line as you push out, you're then going to come back, you're going to push out following that line, trying to avoid rotation now. We're also just going to put the hands in the air as well and this just helps to give a little bit more low, uh, stretch to our low back. This one can also be done in a static position. So Jack is just going to go down onto the floor. Her right knee is going to go forward and this time we're going to place her left knee on the floor and as you can see in the position everything's fixed and it makes it easier to isolate the side bending here and then she can swap through onto the other side as well. So in the same way as our rotation we can work a lot more repetitions here than the first two exercises. Again you might do 30 to 50 each side. It's not a very taxing movement but with that high repetition you start to get feeling more comfortable with the, with the actual movement and also it helps the muscles to move the joints to keep articulating. So that's exercise number four where we're focusing on side bending. So now we're coming on to our fifth exercise, and this is traction of the low back. And in essence, what we're trying to do is just get a separation of the joints, it's like pulling apart. And a lot of people feel relief in this exercise in the low back or depending on the joint that you're focused on. So as I said, we're in quarantine. We built our own rig, which we've called Zeus. So luckily enough, we do have something to hang from but really this can be anything. This can be a door frame. It's just something that allows you to gain that traction of the low back. We're going to show you another variation that can also help traction with a band. But hanging is the, the best option. We'll look at the second best if you don't have this available. So very simply what Jacqueline's going to do is take hold of the bar. And she lets her body weight hang. And what she can now also do in that position is she can actually work flexion extension so the first two exercises we looked at she can then also work rotation and she can also work side bending going from side to side so it's kind of a combination of the the first four exercises but from a in a traction position and just relax and obviously the amount of time that you're in this position is dictated by how long you can hang on the bar. This isn't about working your grip strength, it's more about targeting the low back. So maybe two to three sets of 20 to 30 seconds hang, either just letting the hips relax or adding in those ranges of motion with the traction in place. Yeah, so that's exercise number five. What we're also going to do, for those of you who don't have a hanging option available, we're also going to look at how you can do this with a band. This is a variation of our traction, and what we're going to do now is use a band. The reason we use the band is it acts as that um, point of contact between one vertebra and the other to help pull them apart slightly. So we fix the band around the low back. Jack is then going to have a lie onto the floor. And as you can see, she's folded the band. One's going to go around one knee. One's going to go around the other. And then just as she lies down, you can see that the bands come under tension. That tension is going to help separate the vertebra, giving us the traction. And also in this position, she can start to play about with the rotation from side to side. And she can also adjust the tension a little bit with her knees. 
So this is a way to get traction in the low back if you aren't comfortable with hanging or you don't have anywhere to hang. You can just use the band and it gives it that same, same sensation. So exercise, exercise number five, part B, traction for the low back. So all of these exercises can be done without equipment and can be done in your house. What we would recommend is that you go through this set of exercises two to three times a day, especially if you find yourself sitting more than usual. It should only take no more than 10 minutes. And during that 10 minutes, you'll have gone through every range of motion that your low back needs. So we hope you find this useful. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below and we'll see you soon.